Kwame. Good afternoon. Thank you for taking time out of your busy schedule to meet with me this afternoon. You're welcome. Okay. Kwame, can you tell me just a little bit or share with me just a little bit about your growing experiences, about your early childhood, um, a little bit about you. Just tell me a little bit about you. Thank you. My name is Kwame Apiapubi. I was born at Jukwa. My father is George, my pillar mm -hmm. in most of my life journey. My mom, my pet, Cecilia. But I wasn't raised by them. I was raised by my aunt Agnes in the Western region, Takrabi, who taught me how to live in peace and harmony with everybody in the society. I would say that she really inspired me to be in a good relationship with every human being. She also taught me a lot about entrepreneurial skills. I started my education at Chihuahua, and uh, when it got to the time for me to move to high school, I had a chance of getting a scholarship, Kuku scholarship to the high school, and the only thing that I had in mind from childhood was to be an auditor. So in high school, I did accounting as a program, and uh, after high school, I came back to my community, Chihuahua, to teach. And I never knew I was having this particular gift about women because I was raised by my aunts. I have my mom as my pet, and I have two beautiful ladies that I'm lying between as my sisters. So when I was done with high school and I was teaching at Jaguar, I wrote a poem, I wrote a sketch, a play. And that was even the first time I had a chance to speak on radio in Cape Coast. I organized a play for the kids that I was teaching mm -hmm. after high school, and I entitled that play Importance of Girl Child Education. Afterwards, I moved to college. In college, I wanted to do accounting because that would have a link with auditing as my future prospect that I wanted to attain. But I had two different goals because of the love that I developed in teaching in the, in the elementary school after my high school. So I decided to do accounting, but education in accounting. After my college, I thought for a whole year in the high school economics. And uh, I love to be with kids, as I was saying, because when I was teaching, it even tuned my mind of being an auditor and always love to be with them because they are the people that inspired me to read more. Very good. Can you now tell me a little bit about some of the challenges that you, or struggles that you may have had in your growing experiences that somewhat predestined you to do what you're doing today? In college, my first year in college was when I touched the keyboard of a computer. My first year in college, I felt very inferior when I was given my own computer to work on. I saw other children from the bigger cities, those who were privileged to have these electronic materials when they were growing up, they were using it. The only thing that I knew about computing was left click, right click, left click, right click. I didn't even know the meaning of it. It was a song that I heard in the high school. So I felt that what is what would be the end of the journey if these children have already taken the lead, they've given me a white card. So I felt inferior and I felt bad. But I did not allow that to be an obstacle. I saw that as a major opportunity, a great opportunity as well to learn a lot in computing. Again, one interesting thing that happened back at Calic too was that it was very difficult to raise money to eat. I knew how my parents were really trying to get my aunt Agnes, trying to help me in college. So anytime that I visit them, I accept the little money that they gave to me and I put it in good use. How did I put it in good use? I wasn't buying beef, the pork, the fish, the tilapias. The only thing that I bought was bread. I can eat bread from the morning at breakfast, lunch, 
dinner for a whole week. I had one thing in mind because if I'm able to to, so, to work within my means with the, with the little money they gave to me, they will be happy back at home because I will not be coming to the house all the time. Anytime they see me in the house, I would say they are happy seeing me, but it was a burden because they knew that when I'm going back to school, I'll be given some money. So I decided to stay more in school with the eating of bread. And it was really disturbing for, my, for me as an individual in my academics and for my parents back at the house because they should be happy seeing me. They are happy though, but because of the money I'll be taking from them, it was an issue. So these are some of the challenges, but these challenges I honestly prepared me to who I am now. Okay, very good. Share with me now, what was it that inspired you to become the founder of DKA? And the second part of that, what are some of the strengths of DKA? Good. Uh, as I was saying, I felt inferior. And I realized that the children that I was going to study with at college, they were far ahead of me. Then something came to mind. Why don't I establish something? Or why don't I come up with an idea? whereby the children in my community, Jaqua, comparing themselves to those of Accra and Cape Coast, Kumasi, or the bigger cities that we have in Ghana, when they are comparing themselves, they will lessen the gap, because my gap was very wide. I knew left click, but they were doing or typing. So I decided to come out with this idea to give a firm foundation for a quality education. And that is the idea behind Divine Kids. Our motto is to give a firm foundation for teacher quality education. So I decided to establish this with divine intervention. We've been able to put, we were able to put up three classrooms with my little money I was making then in Accra. It really motivated me because when I come around and I, I realized that my vision is really coming to realization. I try to work harder in Accra to bring the money here. So to make sure I lessen the gap between the kids that we have in our community, Jaguar, and those people who are privileged in the bigger cities, came the birth of Divine Kids on 1st October 2012. And uh, there has never been a turning back. I've always been inspired. As soon as even I see my buildings, I see the kids playing around. We're talking about the strength. And it may interest you to know that we have a lot of schools in Accra that kids will pay about 100 or let's say 500 times the money we pay in the bank kids. But I've signed on an examination body in Accra that the exam that those children who are privileged in Accra are doing, I will collect the exams. I will travel from Accra to Chukwa Divine Kids Academy and I will allow the children to do the same examination. Anytime that I come around and I get their results, a child in Divine Kids Academy will have about 80 over 100. When I go back to Accra and me speaking with the privileged kids, the principal, they keep on telling me that our children here do even get 50 over 100, 60 over 100. That alone inspired me. That alone makes me happy because they were not given the same opportunity. They are not given the same electronic materials to study. They are not given the same buildings, you know. The environment alone were encouraging the child to learn. And I've, I have come to realization that if my children here in the school are given the same privilege like those in Accra, I think they are going to move mountains. Yeah. I believe in volunteering, we are supposed to give up for others to catch up. My children are really catching up and I, I strongly, I'm strongly with the belief that in the next couple of years, we are going to be on top of the world. Wonderful. What are some of the current major challenges that you have at DKA at this time? For DKA, our mission, a firm foundation for future quality education. It has really gotten into the 
brains of all the people of my community, Jamwara. So the number is really swapping up. And that calls for extension of buildings and even in a classroom. Initially, our classroom, the desk was supposed to take two children. But now, because of the number, the growing number, a desk in the classroom takes about three, four kids, which makes it difficult for even writing in the classroom. It has always been a challenge. So, uh, desk, provision of desks is what is really disturbing us. As I was saying, the electronic materials that made me felt inferior when I was in college, it's the same issue. I brought my personal laptop to the children to use, so they will charge it in the room, bring it to the classroom to help them study computing. Because computing is a, is a subject, part of their curriculum that they are supposed to understand in schools. But this is a situation whereby my small laptop who sustained about 15 to 20 children, which make learning very difficult for the teacher and for the child. So uh, we need comp computers will be so uh, needed in the, in the school, so that even if a child, if we have three children using one computer, it will be better than 15 to 20 children all around my single laptop. And uh, because we have a lot of kids in the school, we also need to extend, expand our, our buildings. So these are the three major you know, challenges that the bank kids are facing. Okay. What are some other initiatives that you are undertaking at this time to help with the Divine Kids Academy? As I was saying, based on my initial story, I had a love for women. That is why I never knew. I wasn't even aware that I was having that special love for women. That was why my first sketch that I wrote when I was teaching in the middle school, it was about the importance of girl child education. That was the first time I, I spoke on radio. It was, I was privileged. And I'm with the view that all human beings are supposed to be given equal opportunities in everything that they do. And they believe that what is good for A is supposed to be good for B. So we are coming out with an organization which all documentation will be, will be done by the close of next week, where the training of women, equipping them to be very independent in the society, to be willing to do other stuff to help their little ones is in section. So very soon the organization whereby we'll be seeking for equal rights for women, trying to provide them with alternative livelihood, uh, livelihood skills by teaching them some petty petty trade, giving them the trading skills, letting them know who they are, letting them know that yes they can be a supporting role to their husband. They shouldn't just be so dormant. They should come to a realization that yes they can do what the men are doing. The men can rather give them the supporting role. If I'm giving you the supporting role as a man, you can also give me the supporting role. We need to equip them. That is the organization that we're coming out with. Another one which is in the pipeline, also by next week, which documentation and everything will be ready, is called KKT. K standing for my name, Kwame. And I changed the culture, which is supposed to be C, to K. So that in spelling my culture, use the K and the TV in the tour. So it is KKT, Kwame Cultural Tours. In Kwame Cultural Tours, I've been doing the tour, touring, and I've been working with a lot of tour uh, companies for the past 10 years. And uh, I've come to realization that, why don't I set up something for myself? Yes, we all need money, but a percentage should be set aside to help Divine Kids Academy. So, if at the end of my tour and I've been able, the whole year been able to purchase two or three laptops or computers for the children in the school, I will be happy. It will reduce my burden. So we are now establishing uh, Kwame Culture Tours to help assist the smooth running of Divine Kids Company, Divine Kids Academy. So we have the Kwame Culture Tours and we have 
um, organization and non-profit organization which are all in the pipeline. Uh, I really appreciate, appreciate uh, what you're sharing with me, Kwame. Now, is there anything else that you would like to share with me that I haven't asked you? Uh, anything else you'd like to say? Okay. Um, in growing up, my simple philosophy is this. this. The beauty of life is not how happy I am, but how happy others are because of me. I really want to move along with all people, not only by myself. I want to move in this journey with all men, all women, all children. We cannot do it alone. We need the hands of everybody. When A has an idea, when B has an idea, we bring it on board. If A is less privileged, the assistance that we can give to make them put smiles on their faces, that is currently in our mind. We try to do this. A, B, C, D will come together to make a better world. I strongly believe if we are all having our hands on there, all hands are supposed to be united. When you do that, we can move a better Jigora, a better Central Region, a better Ghana, a better Africa, a better world. I believe if you give up for others to catch up, you should remember that you are giving sunshine and those who give sunshine will never be deprived of the sun itself. We are inviting all volunteers all over the world to come together to answer this call. Whether you are from my country, Ghana, we are seeking for volunteers. Whether you are from whatever part of Africa, from the United States, all across Europe, Asia, going to the Australia, and everywhere, all hands are supposed to be on there. We have opportunities for everybody coming in to teach in the classroom. We have opportunities where you can come in to work with women groups. We have opportunities where you can come in if you are skilled in painting, in, in building, in carpentry, whatever architectural knowledge that you have. You bring it on board, you, we stay in contact, we explain to you where, which area that help are needed. I'm very happy having you and uh, I strongly believe when all hands are together, you will make a better world for all of us to live and enjoy. Thank you so much. You're welcome.